lightning ride at Dollywood opened back in 2016 as the world's fastest wooden roller coaster. Since then, it's open to spectacular critical acclaim, many claiming it to be one of the best roller coasters on the planet. Today, I'm going to break down the ride experience on this attraction, discussing such things as the speed to even the theming of this ride. This will lead me developing a final score for the attraction on a scale of 1 to 10. Let's get started. Normally, this is where I would start off discussing the first drop of this ride. However, this ride begins well before the first drop. The lift hill, yes you heard me, the lift hill, is actually where this ride gets most of its momentum. This ride, unlike other wooden roller coaster, utilizes a LSM launch lift system. This launches riders at 40 miles per hour up the first lift. This is exhilarating, exhilarating speed that no other wooden roller coaster can truly capture. It is fast, it is fun, it is exciting, and this ride actually begins with a small airtime hill before actually cresting the first drop, so coming off of that LSM launch, you get quite a pop of airtime. However, in recent years, it has been said that the very top of the LSM has been removed, so you do lose a bit of speed coming over that drop now that you didn't used to lose. However, it is still a fantastic, fantastic way to start off the ride, that 15 to 20 foot airtime hill that you crest and then go down before actually going over the first drop is also great, but the first drop is fantastic as well. Many people estimate this drop to actually be in the 200 foot range, which would make Lightning Rod possibly a hyper coaster, but Dollywood says that the height of this roller coaster is 165 feet, so we're going to go by that standard. It is a fantastic first drop. You get some serious ejector airtime, it is fun, it is insane. It is without a doubt probably my favorite drop on a wooden roller coaster. And I would say the Lightning Rod's probably not even my favorite wooden roller coaster, but it probably is my favorite drop just because it is insane ejector that you get getting thrown off of that first drop. It is truly unlike anything I've ever experienced. I loved it. Let's talk about the airtime now on this attraction. This is what many people say is the greatest aspect of Lightning Rod, and I cannot argue with that. That is truly what defines this ride. Yes, you do have some wave turns thrown in there as well. However, the airtime is where this ride shines the most. You have a couple of airtime hills at the beginning of the ride, and then at the very end of the ride to finish off the layout, you have the quadruple down, which is undisputably the most profound moments of airtime on any roller coaster ever, possibly. It is insane ejector that is undescribable, and it hits you so fast and so quick it's so great. And that kind of leads us into the next aspect of Lightning Rod, which is the pacing. And talking about this and the quadruple down actually works quite well because the quadruple down is so great since the pacing of this attraction is so fantastic. Without that pacing, you wouldn't have the quadruple down. If it, if it, did, if it did that any slower than it does, I don't know how well that airtime would be delivered. But because of that pacing and because of how fast you are flying at that moment, it is incredible. So this ride, without a doubt, has flawless pacing. It is fantastic. You never slow down, and you're, you're flying going into the brakes. It's crazy. And now let's talk about the duration of the ride. This ride clocks in at just under 4,000 feet long. However, I think the shortness and length kind of plays an advantage. I think that if the ride had done anything more, there's a possibility that they would have lost some momentum, lost some speed, and I think that's what's so amazing about this attraction and what so many people highlight about this attraction is that the pacing is so great that the speed is never lost throughout the course, and if they had added a couple more airtime mills or an inversion or something of that aspect, there was a possibility of losing that momentum. So they could have added something on, and it maybe would not have affected the speed, but I don't think they were going to chance it. I think they really enjoyed what they had produced, and I think in hindsight, it was actually quite a good decision because... Hitting the brakes going at probably close to 60 miles per hour is amazing, and if there was any chance for that to happen by adding other elements to the ride, I'm really glad they didn't, because I know for a fact a lot of enthusiasts probably would go, oh, the pacing towards the end of the ride is not good. So I think hitting the brakes, like I said, going so fast really 
adds a level of insaneness to this ride. I don't know many other roller coasters where you're going that fast when you hit the brakes, and it is phenomenal. I don't know if that's truly the reason for the, why they made it so short. It could have been that they just didn't have a big plot of land, but in my opinion, if they had done a longer roller coaster, there was probably a good chance that it wasn't going to have the momentum, have the speed that this attraction does, so I'm kind of glad in a way that they kept it under 4,000 feet. You end up pulling about 3.5 Gs on Lightning Rod, which just shows you how intense this attraction really is. The airtime moments are intense, the laterals on the wave turns are intense. This ride is non-stop relentless and it is quite the intensity master. It is really, really one of the most intense roller coasters out there. I would even compare it to the likes of something like Instant Hero 5 or The Voyage or something like that. It is very, very intense. It is not messing around on this attraction whatsoever. It is without a doubt. A very aggressive attraction. Another thing that me, among many other enthusiasts, I'm sure enjoy is the theming of this attraction. Themed to an old 50s hot rod, you actually enter the ride through an old service and gas station, which is just immersed in different aspects from the 50s. It is so great. You have old 50s music playing. You have an old 50s car in the shop. It is fantastic. The actual zero car for this attraction is a old 50s hot rod. And it's been changed a couple of times, but it still looks great to this day. They had to change it due to some size issues. I believe it was too large before, and it was actually impacting the ride. However, it still looks great with the new Zero Car, which is smaller, but still serves the same purpose. So the theming of this attraction is without a doubt one of the best, and especially coming from somebody that loves 50s music and loves the 50s, I love it a lot, and I'm sure that I'm not alone in that aspect. And even if you're not a huge 50s fan, it is still a great, great overlay theme. So for my overall score of Lightning Rod, I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. Without a doubt, I have to give it that. Great theming, obviously. It's intense, great airtime, it's smooth. It is a fantastic roller coaster. Anybody that tells you otherwise... <laughs> is wrong. Um, it, it is phenomenal. It is without a doubt one of the best wooden roller coasters in the world, one of the best coasters in the world. It currently ranks, I believe, at number three for me, just for anybody that cares about rankings. It's my second favorite wooden roller coaster, and it is a great, great attraction. Thank you guys all so much for watching this review of Lightning Rod at Dollywood in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Great wooden roller coaster, and I'm excited that I got to review it today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys all in the next one. Bye, everyone.